Santa Cruz County psych or psychics. What? <laughs> I'm doing the same thing as you. It's all my fault. I'm sorry. We're talking about astrologers and psychics. And I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just doing it to see if people pay attention. Skeptics. And um, so I, I've been sort of in and out of the, I guess, skeptical community for a long time, so for 30 years ish, close to that anyway. Um, uh, I was a biology major in school, and I, you know, picked up books like *The Demon Haunted World* from Carl Sagan and stuff like that, and got really into uh, read *Skeptical Inquirer* magazine, *Skeptic* magazine, and things like that. And then over the years, you know, life happened, and um, wasn't so much involved or paying attention to what was going on. And then um, I think probably during the pandemic sometime, I was like, I wonder if there's like a group in Santa Cruz or something like that. And um, I looked around and there wasn't, but I found Susan's group in Monterey. So I joined that just sort of like, and just kind of followed what was going along. And then maybe a, a year later, looked again to see if there was a uh, Santa Cruz group. And there's, I still couldn't find one. I found remnants of one that maybe existed 10 years ago or something like that. And um, so I finally just messaged Susan and I'm like, hey, you know, am I missing something or is there no Santa Cruz group? And um, Susan replied, basically, uh, there isn't one, you should start one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I guess I'll start one. So that's what I did. <laughs> and um, so we had a few meetings and then not too long into that, um, Psycon came along and I don't know, is there many people here that have not been to Psycon? Okay, so close to half, so that's good. So this, this part's for you. <laughs> um, so um, Psycon is the, I think it's probably the biggest skeptics conference in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think the precursor was maybe the Amazing Meeting, the James Randi's organization. And um, so Psycon is the committee for, I always get all those acronyms. The committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Skeptical Inquiry. I know there's, a, there's the CFI and then, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I decided to go to Psycon and see what that was all about. And I didn't really know what to expect at all. Um, I did see the speaker list beforehand, and I'm like, oh, that could be interesting because there's some pretty famous people that were going to be speaking there. And um, so I went, and uh, first thing I did, I got there and um, talked to Susan, and like, well, you know, I'm, I'm at the airport. <laughs> so what's the best way to get there from, you know, to the hotel from the airport? And she hooked me up with Adrian, who is somewhere here, who is talking, and um, Rob Palmer, who is, I don't think is here, but. Um, and I, oh, wait, it went forward on here and not up there. Uh, see. Use your mind. Mm. Is it turned on? Yeah, this what? is controlling that, but it's not affecting what's up here. Uh, try the try the key on the keyboard. Everybody use your mind, come on, help them out. <laughs> Maybe it's in the wrong mode, let's see. It could be, because I'm the one that did it, so it could be wrong. Somebody techie, yeah. run up quick. <laughs> the data skeptic. Use the power, like I said, the power of your mind will do it. Can you take it back out and just start it again? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I got there and um, it was, I, you know, again, didn't know what to expect, but I was like quickly introduced to a lot of people and sat down at a table, I think, with like about 25 people eating dinner and um, everybody hanging out. And we got introduced to a few other people and we walked into this bar and like Brian Dunning from the Skeptoid podcast was over there and went back, ate dinner, and it was just like, oh, okay, you know, and everybody was like super friendly and, um, and just, Instantly wanting to talk to everybody, introductions, and you know, so I, I, I had no problem like feeling like oh, like I fit right in, and this was, it was just like a, a great community, you know, already that first night before even talks had started. Can you see your cursor, Carl? Yeah. 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 We're getting further away. Do you need to call me up? <laughs> Maybe. I scare things into to working. Mm -hmm. Do you see the PowerPoint down at the bottom? The desktop has the PowerPoint down yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, it. I know it opens because I. It opens. Or, that's a second screen. Yeah. 
Yeah, it thinks it's the second screen. I think it's Jay, because Jay came over and he started messing with the computer. It's on Jay's phone. I'm going to blame Jay. <laughs> How many skeptics does it take to, to fix the PowerPoint slide? You can just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so Act out the, the slides. Yeah. Some of the speakers that uh, at SciCon, um, we had people like Penn and Teller, the magicians. They were at SciCon, um, and they would, had a great interview. Um, Bill Nye was there, getting an award presented by Richard Dawkins. And so that was pretty cool. And like most of them, except Penn and Teller, they kind of like came, they had a show to do, so they came, showed up quickly, and then left. But like Bill Nye and Richard Dawkins, they hung out the whole conference and were hanging around, and people were talking to them, and so it was kind of. There it is. Yay! Yay. 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 Yeah, Wendy had flowers in her hair. <laughs> oh, where'd the remote go? Oh, there it is. And then I'm oh, showing out the the uh, the swag or some of the swag anyway. You can buy it. Got a T-shirt. The theme this year was kind of like these foil hats um, on a flamingo, and um, there's a little badge. And oh! <laughs> so one of the first things I did uh, the morning of the talks is uh, Susan just had a, a giant thing of tin foil and or aluminum foil, and I was just like, okay, well I guess I'll make hats. So I looked up a YouTube video on how to make foil hats. And I made a couple different models. And uh, I think, Susan, you probably wore yours the entire conference. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> even into the elevator, and I got quite a few looks. Yeah. Um, but that was a lot of fun. And so that was in the room where there's like a bookshop and like a lot of tables with displays. So they had someone doing like a little dowsing demonstration. And um, there's some of the speakers. So we had, uh, like I said, uh, Richard Dawkins. Uh, Stephen Huff, he's the, I guess, the, the sort of CEO wish. No, he's the, he's the new editor of Skeptical Car Magazine. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, I believe that's Seema Yasmin. Um, she had a book called What the Fact that she was kind of like speaking about and promoting, which was really fantastic. I ended up buying the book. Um, other speakers were uh, Leanne Lord, who was actually a comedian. Uh, I was not expecting that to have like a comedian, and she was fantastic, and I, I'm usually really hard to please with stand-up comedians, but she was actually very funny, so <laughs> that was great. Um, Dustin Dean, he's a mentalist and a magician. He does a lot of stuff online. Um, he did a demonstration on cold reading and talked about what he does on, you know, uh, sort of debunking TikTok videos and whatnot. Um, we had Mick West, who's sometimes in the news now because of all the UFO stuff going on. He was one of the speakers. Um, Erica Engelhaupt, um, she wrote a book that I just happened to have here, Gory Details, um, which was, uh, her talk was so interesting. So the subtitle of the book is Adventures from the Dark Side of Science. And um, it was all about like disgust. And so her talk was about disgusting things. And I'm like, well, this is right up my alley. So even before her talk was over, I was on my phone buying the audiobook. <laughs> and then after the talk, I, I also bought the physical book and gave that to my wife. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, and another one was uh, Melanie Tracy King, who um, I think she is a biology professor um, and uh, has a website called Thinking is Power. And um, her talk was just really fantastic, and I think she was on a panel discussion as well. And so, yeah, it was just a great diversity of different topics and, and people, and it's just, it was a lot more interesting than I was even expecting. I thought it would be interesting, but um, yeah. So there's uh, Penn and Teller right there during their talk, and there's Bill and I kind of walking up and getting the uh, an award from Richard Dawkins. Um, and then the other thing I, I kind of touched on was yeah. There's just I thought the sense of community there was definitely not what I was expecting. I thought yeah, I'm going to a conference and I'll meet a couple people and everything. But it was like instantly I had like 30 new friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I was really surprised about that. And they were yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah, a few people that are in the picture are here today. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and that 
sort of continued throughout the whole conference, just that you know, every time between talks, every people would go out to lunch together, um, um, out to dinner together. I think um, the author of the Gory Tea Tales book that I just wrote, uh, raised up, um, she came out and was kind of talking to a couple of us afterwards, and we were going to go to lunch, and so she ended up going to lunch with us. So it's like, you know, you end up talking, you know, and going out to lunch and talking to the speakers and stuff, and everybody's just kind of like, yeah, they're the speakers, but everybody's just sort of on the same level and hanging out. So mm -hmm. that was that was unexpected and pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one. So there's my wife and I with uh, Bill Nye, um, and then us with Ross Blotcher of the uh, Oh No Ross and Carrie podcast. Um, also, a Santa, Santa or former Santa Cruz local, he still has family up here. And let's see. Oh, and then uh, the obligatory <laughs> photo next to Skeptical Inquirer, and I think there's some conspiracy theory. <laughs> the, uh, the toilet there. <laughs> uh, I, things like that amuse me to no end, so I have to take a photo. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I would highly recommend PsyCon. Um, I know back there on the rear table are some of these. Uh, informational cards from last year's uh, 2023 that has a speaker list and the dates, which is the last weekend of October. And they just announced the new one, which is also going to be the last weekend of October in Las Vegas again. Um, so if you're, if you know, need a reminder, you might want to go, um, definitely pick up one of those cards and it'll give you a little info. And I think it probably has a web address to look up stuff on there and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and the only other thing, you're in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, in general, not my favorite place, but that's just me. Some people love it. But I still found some great things to do there. Um, we went and saw Penn and Teller's Magic Show, which was sort of like on like my lifelong dream list. Like I wanted to see their Magic Show live, and so I got to do that. Um, there's the new big orb sphere thing. I know some people from the conference went and saw U2 play there one night, and. Uh, so that was pretty cool, and it was just cool to watch from, from a distance. And actually, the, that photo we took from, there's a giant uh, Ferris wheel that's like 550 feet high, and we took a ride in that, and so I snapped that photo from the, the, the orb or sphere or whatever uh, from there. Um, and then we went to a place called Meow Wolf, um, which was, yeah, it's like this immersive walkthrough art thing, and there's a storyline going on, and you can you pick up things and read things and watch videos, and you kind of get an idea of like what's going on in the story. And I think we spent at least I don't know, probably close to three hours in there. Um, but it was it was bizarre and fantastic. <laughs> um, definitely another thing highly recommended. So anyway, apart from the conference, that's just fun things in Vegas. <laughs> right. No, it's 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 an immersive like maybe participatory art exhibit. That's the best way I can explain it. You just you go and you walk through, and it's it's a visual. There's some interactive stuff you can do. There was a couple things where you like could play music and make rhythms and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, I think there's one in New Mexico as well. It's the mm -hmm. same company, um, but they're they're pretty cool places. Um, and then also on the switch here slightly. And so this is the uh, Santa Cruz County Skeptics logo. Um, if anybody knows anything about Santa Cruz, banana slugs are a, sort of a particular feature of the natural environment in Santa Cruz and also the mascot of UC Santa Cruz. So I decided to use that as kind of our mascot as well and uh, had someone draw this up with some redwood trees and whatnot. And I kind of, just my personality, I kind of wanted something kind of a little cartoony and silly, just no, so it wouldn't be so serious. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. Um, so the main thing that we've done so far is we just have once a month we just have a skeptic social and we just get together and we hang out and uh, just talk. Sometimes I bring board games because I'm a big board game person. Um, today I just in case I don't know we probably won't have time but I brought a game called Cryptid which is you know sort of skeptic theme and I brought my. Um, my sort of religiously themed Ouija board that allows you to talk directly to Jesus Christ, according to what it says in the, in the rules and content. It's pretty funny, actually. 
Um, and I think this particular day on the, the left was the day Ross, Ross Blotcher from Ono, Ross and Carey came to our uh, Santa Cruz County meetup because he has family in town, so he uh, came there that day and that kind of helped us out. We attracted a lot of extra people that day and um, a, a few people that came that day just because Ross had announced it on the podcast kept coming, so that's, that was cool. Um, the next one I think is when we went to pizza together. There's obviously a Susan selfie. <laughs> there, there we go. Um, <clears throat> one thing I'd like to do more of, and I have some things planned, uh, is do outings. So we actually got together with a bunch of the Monterey County skeptics and the Santa Cruz County skeptics, and we went to the mystery spot in Santa Cruz, and it's a place where there's a bunch of optical illusions and whatnot like that. And um, I, I think we, it was just an idea of like, you know, we didn't go there to like, Try to debunk it or anything like that. We just went to like have fun and you know, we know what it is, all optical illusions and whatnot. And after that, we went up to Felton to the Bigfoot Museum, which is uh, I don't know if anybody's ever been there. Well, how many people have been there? I know some of you have because you're in the photos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the guy right over here who runs the Bigfoot Museum. Um, is definitely a true believer and a very interesting person to talk to. He has all kinds of stories, very interesting stories. <laughs> um, um, but you know, we everybody, you know, we we were nice to him. Like we just wanted to hear him and hang out and see what he had to say. And you know, no one was in there trying to be combative or anything like that. And I think he did enjoyed us being there. Um, I think we bought a couple of his art prints. He draw, has pictures of Bigfoot that he draws. I think there's one that includes like a picture of a, like a female Bigfoot kind of laying on a motorcycle, which was a little weird. <laughs> um, but it's a lot of fun if you get a chance to talk. It's a free museum if you're ever in the Felton area up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's a, it's a fun place to go to. Um, another thing that I'm trying to get together, so there's a Santa Cruz Ghost Hunters group, and I'm trying to, I've been in talks with the woman who wrote this book. Um, and she runs the Ghost Hunters group in Santa Cruz, and um, we're trying to get together something so we can go to the Brookdale Lodge, which is the purportedly haunted lodge up in Brookdale in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And we want to get like a few of us skeptics together and a few of her people together and just go and do a ghost hunt. Yeah. And just for fun, again, like I've talked to her, I'm like, we're not going to go there and we, we don't want me to be jerks, you know, we're, we just want to go and hang out, see what you do. We'll ask some hard questions. I mean, and see what you have to say and maybe point out some things that we think about what you're doing. But in the end, you know, we just want to go and, and be friendly and, you know, like, just, you know, make the community bigger and like, you know, this is where we're at. This is why we're asking the questions we're asking. Um, and she agreed to that, but we're, we're still in talks with the Brookdale Lodge to get, you know, figure out the day and time and when it's going to work. Um, the other thing that I would like to do in our skeptics group is because I think skeptics in general get uh, a rap of being um, very sort of negative, pessimistic curmudgeons who just want to go and debunk everything. And that's kind of why I don't like the word debunk so much. I just, um, skeptic um, originally in, from the Greek actually means investigations or investigator. Um, and so I, I like to say like, oh, we investigate things. We ask questions. We're, we're trying to find the truth. Um, we're not necessarily just trying to, bu to debunk things. You know, that just sounds negative. And so I like to just say, we, we investigate things. We're just trying to figure out what's actually going on. And um, one aspect, if you saw our logo here, is that science critical thinking and humanism. And humanism has to do with um, basically just being a good person mm -hmm. without the need for you know a higher power or a spiritual type of thing, God. Um, and I, I know there actually are even religious humanists, because they, they just acknowledge the fact that, you know, they might have their religious beliefs, their faith, spirituality, but they acknowledge that that's not required for being a decent person. There's, there's other reasons to be a decent person. And I would like to get our group into, like, you know, promoting, like, hey, look, you know, maybe it's a little PR, but, you know, but also to sort of try to, like, get out of the sort of stereotype of being just curmudgeons that debunk things. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um... <laughs> it has a certain, you yeah. You <laughs> um, But anyway, some of the ideas, and I've, I've actually talked to two of these organizations already about getting a, a group of us, you know, skeptic people to go, and maybe we'll all wear skeptic t-shirts, or I don't know, something goofy like that. Um, but um, go, like, do some beach cleanups and some waterway cleanups for the Save Our Shores. Um, 
Homeless Gardener Project in Santa Cruz. We've talked to them about maybe going, if there's something that we can actually uh, help out with with the Homeless Gardener Project or indirectly go and like, like donate a bunch of socks and toothbrushes and stuff and like hand them out to homeless people and stuff and just like, hey, we're a part of the community, like, you know, as well. And like, we, we want to help out. And that's sort of the humanism part of what I'd like to get more into the group. And then of course, Big Basin uh, State Park was pretty much devastated in the fires a few years ago. And um, they're doing a lot of rebuilding trails. There's a lot of work to do. And um, my wife Tara and I were just recently there and we saw all the trail workers out there. And I was like, we should come here. <laughs> and um, it was our first time back at Big Basin since the fires. And um, so I'd, I'd like to get some people out there and volunteering and sort of represent the skeptics coming out to help rebuild the state park as well. So, um, and I think I was just going to leave it at this as kind of springboarding off of like, you know, what do we do with skeptics and stuff like that? I just thought this was an interesting one that was uh, recently in uh, a podcast I really like called Unbiased Science, and they came up with some really great graphics. And this one's just about people that are, I guess, fluoride hesitant. Um, and this is just showing, okay, there's some research showing how much fluoride you take in when you brush your teeth, um, changes by age. Um, and then how much fluoride's in a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? Ooh. And it's like, if you're worried about the fluoride in your toothpaste, you, but yet not worried about the fluoride in your tea or coffee. Oh, interesting. You know, you, and so that's like this type of things that I feel like as skeptics we can point out. So like, hey, you don't need to be worried about it. This, you know, the science is behind it and whatnot. But anyway, I just thought I'd leave you with something like fun. And uh, anyway, that's, my pitch for SciCon and what we do at Santa Cruz County Skeptics. Yay! <laughs>